Uh, next, as promised, we have with us a man who is directly in the fight. Uh, he is an investigative journalist by training and practice. He has also worked in government, that uh, Office of Management and Budget that uh, Sandy was talking about earlier. Um, he is currently helping uh, identify and train individuals who are interested in their communities in opposing this kind of refugee program that, as Mark has talked about, is bringing in willy-nilly, among others, more jihadists. Uh, he is Jim Simpson, again, the author of The Red-Green Axis, Refugees, Immigration, and the Erasing of America. Jim Simpson, welcome. Thanks a lot, Frank. Thanks you all for being here. You know, um, <clears throat> we spend a lot of time digging into these issues and try to inform you as best we can. But you know, we need you guys. You're the ones who will affect change because without a groundswell of support for these efforts to, to overcome the massive infrastructure that the left and other enemies of this country have created here requires full court press, requires all of us to be on board from now until we complete the job. So I'm very grateful and very thankful that you're all here. First principles, very important. The issue is never the issue. The issue is always the revolution. A 60s radical leftist said that, and it was probably one of the most honest things the left has ever said. Because what he meant was that issues for them, and it doesn't matter, you can pick Immigration, gay rights, welfare, civil rights, it doesn't matter. The issue for them is only relevant insofar as it can be used as a vehicle to advance them into positions of power so that they can move forward with the fundamental transformation of this country into a leftist God knows what. But one thing's for certain. Yes, it, uh, thank you. Socialism. No, not Solinsky. It was actually quoted by David Horowitz, who quoted a, a friend of his who said it. This is what we're up against. And the resettlement, immigration, open borders agenda is a perfect vehicle for the left to complete its transformation of this country. And let, let, let's just be clear about it. This is not a new agenda. It's been going on since the dawn of time. These are simply unscrupulous people, corrupt people, who were willing to use any and every tactic to insinuate themselves into positions of power. That's all it is. Socialism puts a pretty face on it. We're here to help the little guy. No, we're not. We're here to insinuate ourselves into power, suck all governments, suck all resources into the federal government so we can redistribute it to our friends and the people who are going to support us. That's what it's about. And the resettlement immigration issue, perfect for that. We're all seeing it. It dilutes American culture by bringing in people from all over the world of disparate cultures that have no understanding of our Constitution, no understanding of the rule of law, no interest in any of that, but only what American, can, American society can provide in benefits to them. They will not support 
the notion of a constitutional Republican government. And that is what is critical and essential. That's what's made us special. That's what's made us the most prosperous nation in the world. And that's what the left wants to destroy because it's standing in the way. Undermines the rule of law. How many rules of law has Obama undermined? Sucks up welfare resources. We'll get into that. It creates chaos, racial and ethnic tension of all varieties, fiscal stress, unemployment for Americans, but not for those folks who are coming here. They're beneficiaries. But it creates loyal voters for the leftists, and that's what they really want. Next screen. The refugee resettlement agenda was actually established in 1976 at the Conference of Human Settlements, at the, uh, sponsored by the United Nations in Vancouver, Canada. Did it have anything to do with resettling refugees and solving problems that way? No. It had to do with ab abolishing private property. That was a main focus. It had to do with redistributing socialism again redistributing not merely income as we all think of it but redistributing entire populations around the world and you know in the in the 70s the un was very big on promoting zero population growth we all know that right they've been at it like crazy talking about well the united states we have pretty much zero population growth well guess what now the un says you don't have enough population growth. You need replacement migration. And that's one of the excuses they use to bring in people here because we don't have enough young people to staff the factories and whatever that they want. So that's another rationale. It is the foundation for the open borders agenda, entirely conceived by the radical left at a UN conference. Next, next slide. Oh, are the ISIS worries really stupid? At least two of the Paris attackers came in on refugee uh, passports. This guy, a Somali refugee in the United States, went back and became a primary uh, recruiter for ISIS. FBI has a thousand, almost a thousand ISIS investigations in all 50 states ongoing right now. You can read the rest. Okay, so, you know, people sort of came to their senses and started fighting back against this issue. And the resettlement agencies named them pockets of resistance. And the resettlement agencies and their various supporters actually went forward and created this campaign designed specifically to oppose these pockets of resistance. And it's an organized nationwide campaign of vilification. Guess what? Can, can you just fill in the blanks? What is anybody who opposes this out of control, insane refugee resettlement program? You want to fill in the blank? Racist, bigot, xenophobe, you're all bad people. And it's an organized effort using the Southern Poverty Law Center and other organizations, all funded by George Soros and other radical leftist uh, funding organizations. They're trying to change the culture by changing the narrative. And it's a massive, massive operation. But people are fighting back all over the country. And we call ourselves the pockets of resistance because that's what we're doing. We are resisting them. There's 30 governors who oppose refugee resettlement. There are all these different things that people are doing all around the country, and there's dozens more that I can't name or I couldn't list.